This tutorial will introduce you to the total station and its key features. How to prepare to survey including how to set the instrument up over a peg and orientate it before discussing basic recording, traversing and recording detail. The total station consists of a telescope in an instrument that can be rotated horizontally and vertically. The instrument is set up by adjusting the screws around its base until various bubble levels are centred and once set up it will stay level when you rotate it. The total station measures horizontal angles, vertical angles and distance and is capable of measuring down to a few millimetres. This is usually done with an infrared beam reflected back from a prism mounted on a pole, although some models use a laser. The gun sight here on the top helps you roughly line up the instrument with the prism and then the tangent screws can be used to make little adjustments left and right and up and down until you're fully aligned. The eyepiece can be adjusted to improve the visibility of the crosshairs and focus is usually controlled by an additional ring on the eyepiece. Prisms come in a variety of sizes and sit in a holder attached to an extendable pole. They can also sit in a tri brack on a tripod which as you'll see is used when you need to move the total station. When you set the total station up you have to tell the instrument where it is, you have to tell it the height of the instrument above ground to its centre line and the height of the prism from the ground and this information is all entered into the machine. Measurements are made by sighting onto the prism and pressing a button and there will usually be an audible tone when measuring followed by a beep when finished. Depending on how you have the instrument set up, the distance, horizontal and vertical angles are used to calculate the three-dimensional location of the point measured. After taking a measurement, you usually have to then press another button to save the point. Points recorded can be downloaded to your computer later. It's useful to keep a check of the points recorded on a sketch map, showing their approximate location, and it doesn't harm to fill in a pro forma record sheet containing a description of each point. To set up and orientate the total station on site, you'll need to get hold of the most detailed ordnance survey map that you can and get the grid reference of a prominent feature such as a building or a field corner. In this example, point A. Next, measure the distance along a wall, say 20 metres, and then measure out 5 to 10 metres at 90 degrees to the wall and find the grid reference for that point, which we'll call B. You also have to estimate the height above sea level from the map contours. On site, measure out the distances and place a peg in the ground at point B. Next, you need to set up your total station over that point. Setting up over a peg can be a very frustrating task, but it's an essential part of using a total station and with practice it gets easier. Start by setting up the tripod to a height to suit you and place it over the peg. Move the legs to get the top level. If you're not doing this every day, a small line level can make this easier. Check that the peg is below the centre of the tripod and if not, adjust the tripod. Once you're happy, push the feet in an even amount. Set the total station on the tripod and make sure that you remember to attach the battery. Look through the optical plummet to see if it's above the peg and adjust it if you need to. Level the total station by adjusting the knobs on the tri brack first with the telescope over two screws turning them in opposite directions and then turn by 90 degrees so that it's over a single screw. 
You'll have to repeat this process several times until the bubble stays in the middle in both positions. Check the optical plummet again and if you need to, slacken the screw underneath and slide the total station until it's directly over the peg. Once level and over the peg you can turn the instrument on. From this point on it's essential that you don't kick the legs, bump the instrument or accidentally knock the battery off. If you do any of those things you'll have to reset the instrument to avoid having any errors. Once the total station is set up and turned on, set up a new survey and enter the 3D coordinates of points A and B. So that's the grid reference plus the height above sea level. Next you need to tell the instrument where it is, in this case point B. And then you need to point the instrument at point A and tell it to take a back sight. The total station doesn't usually need to measure that distance, this is simply an exercise to orientate it so it knows where it is and which way it's pointing. And because the initial coordinates were grid references, all the points that you record beyond this will be relative to the Ordnance Survey grid. During the setup you'll input the height of the instrument and the prism. The measuring process involves the instrument measuring the distance to the prism, a horizontal angle and a vertical angle. Because it knows the location and height of the instrument and the height of the prism, it can calculate the three-dimensional location of the unknown point on the ground. Once set up, you can record excavation trenches by moving the prism from corner to corner. You can also record the depth of deposits, the locations of features or finds, etc. Even if you have multiple trenches, if you've carefully chosen the location of the instrument, you should be able to record the whole project from one setup, although you may have to use radios to coordinate the person with the prism and the person operating the instrument. Be aware that although your measurements will be stored on the total station, if you turn it off it will forget where it is and you'll have to reset it. Providing that it was not moved when switched off, you can do this by backsighting onto a previously recorded point. When you need to move the total station to a new position to record detail not visible from the first setup, we use a second tripod and set it up with a tri-brack with a prism in a prism holder. The total station also sits in a tri-brack and this is the part which is levelled when setting up. The second tri-brack is levelled and the height to the centre of the prism is measured and this is input into the total station before measuring the distance. Next, the prism holder is removed, leaving the tri-brack in place. The total station is switched off and then lifted off its tri-brack and the instrument and the prism are swapped. As the tri-bracks have stayed in place, both should still be level when swapped. The total station is switched back on and the job files opened. You then tell the instrument which point it's at and point it at the prism which is now on the first tripod. Tell the instrument which point this is and then take a back sight to it. The total station is now located and orientated and you can continue to survey. Surveyors call the points where the instrument is set up stations and the process of moving from one position to another is called traversing. And here you can see even a simple survey of a building may need at least three station setups to record all its walls. A traverse can either be open or closed. Closed is where you finish back at the point you started from and this helps to identify any errors in your survey. When your first and last points don't have the same values this is called a misclosure error. A few centimetres is nothing to worry about but if it's more you may have to consider redoing some or all of your survey. Having shown you how to traverse with a total station this section will discuss recording detail at each of the survey stations. This is the ideal opportunity to answer a question that I'm often asked. How many points should I record when using a total station? It really depends on how much detail you want to show at the scale that you intend to use. 
Although you may well be drawing the survey up as a CAD drawing that can be shown at any scale, you should still have a target scale in mind. For example, for a landscape survey, your target scale is likely to be 1 to 500. And at that scale, 1 meter equals 1 millimeter. You'll therefore have trouble showing any detail less than 1 meter. It may be that you only need to record changes in direction or the corners of features. A good idea is to look at each feature in turn and sketch it and then consider what are the minimum number of points needed to represent it accurately. Here you can see how a set of earthworks can be recorded by taking measurements from only two survey stations. To produce this plan, firstly on site, make a sketch plan of the features. The location and the number of the points recorded could be added to this as a, a memory aid. When drawing up, points recorded are then used as guides to draw hashes representing slopes. The points are naturally not shown on the finished drawing.